Uh, hi everybody, Physics Ninja. Today what I want to do is I want to look at how you calculate uh, the magnetic force when you have two currents next to each other. There are two uh, situations to consider. Uh, the first that I'm going to look at is when uh, currents are parallel to one another. How do you apply my force equation to calculate the direction and the magnitude of the force of one wire acting on the other wire? In the second case, I'm going to flip one of those currents so the currents are anti-parallel. All right, in the second video I'm going to make, which I'll link in the description, I'm going to apply what I've uh, taught you in this video in order to consider a more complicated arrangement of wires. I'm going to consider three wires on the vertices of an equilateral triangle, and how would you calculate the magnetic force of two wires acting on the third? All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, let's get started. All right, in order to solve this problem, I'm first just going to review two right-hand rules that I use to solve this. Now, our force equation is written as uh, this equation right here. It's the current multiplied by the length, okay? And it has a vector here. This simply means that that vector is going in the direction of the current. Um, there is a cross product now with the magnetic field, and it's the magnetic field where the current is located. So I have to know how to evaluate the direction of this cross product. And for this, I use right-hand rule number one. It's depicted here in that little cartoon. You take your index finger, you point it in the direction of the first vector. That is the direction of the current. Now the second vector, the index vector, um, sorry, the index finger points in the direction of the magnetic field, okay? And my thumb gives me the direction of this cross product. This will give me the direction of the magnetic force acting on that current. Okay, so this is how you have to find the direction of the force. Okay, this is one of many methods. This is the method I prefer to use. All right, let's try a simple example to make sure we understand this uh, property here. All right, let's practice with this simple example here. I have a current, a positive current uh, moving to the right, and it's placed in a magnetic field that is into the page. Right-hand rule number one says you take your index finger, you place it in the direction of the current. My middle finger should point in the direction of the magnetic field. That's into the page. And now look at the direction of my thumb. My thumb is pointing up when I do this. That means that this current here would experience a magnetic force, F, that is acting upward. All right, let's look at right-hand rule number two now. All right, our magnetic force equation has a very important term, right? There has to be a magnetic field in space if there's gonna be a force acting on a current. So we have to be able to understand how to find the direction of the magnetic field. All right, so magnetic fields are themselves produced by currents. So how would we find the direction, for example, of the field produced by a current that is flowing in some arbitrary direction. Let's start with the upward direction. Right-hand rule number two is used to find the direction of the magnetic field. So all you have to do for right-hand rule number two, again, it's not to find the force, that's right-hand rule number one. Right-hand rule number two says you put your thumb in the direction of the current, the positive current, and just curl your fingers around that current. What you see is you have that the field is in the direction of your fingers. So if I have a long wire carrying a current upward, the magnetic field produced by this current is simply circumferential around that wire, okay? It would simply form circles around that wire. That would be the direction of the magnetic field. So it's always changing as I go around a circle around that wire. Okay, now let's go back to our original problem and apply everything we've learned. All right, we start with our first case where we have parallel currents. Our goal is to calculate the magnitude and the direction of the magnetic force, but on which object? We have two objects here. I am going to start with finding the force on the current I2. So if I look at my force equation, I'm just gonna write a two here. It's the force on object two. Um, that means it has a current I2, which in this case I'm gonna assume is 0 0.5 amps. It's going to have a length, okay? That is the length of object two. Now what about this last term? And this is the important part. This current here is placed in space. It's placed next to another current. It's placed in the magnetic field produced by this guy. Okay, so it's really the field produced by object one at this location. 
So we really have to use two right-hand rules for this problem. We first have to use a right-hand rule to find the magnetic field produced by current I1. And then, well, we go back and we use my right-hand rule in order to find the direction of the force. We have to evaluate this cross product between the two vectors. So let's first look at the current I1 and find the direction of the field everywhere in space. So for this, we start by just looking at the current I1. I am going to apply my right-hand rule. Again, this case was right-hand rule number two is used to find the direction of the magnetic field. So you place your thumb in the direction of the current that's going up, and my fingers now curl around, right? So the field is changing direction, and it is circumferential like this. However, after I'm going to be placing a current over here in this region over here, somewhere to the right of the first wire, but if you look at the field everywhere on the right-hand side of this current, we're going to notice that the magnetic field here is always into the page. Now, how do you represent a vector into the page? Again, you simply write it as something like this. Everywhere in space now, anywhere to the right of uh, the current I1, the vector is into the page. Look at what these vectors are going on this side. Right? These vectors here are coming out of the page. Again, I'm looking at a two-dimensional view here. All right, so we know the direction of the magnetic field. How now do we find the magnitude of the field? Okay, I've done videos on this before. You can, do, you can look this up in your book. The magnitude of the field is pretty straightforward. It's mu zero, that's the permeability of free space, multiplied by the current. In this case, it's the current I1. In this, we're looking at the field produced by that current divided by 2 pi multiplied by the distance from the center of that wire. Okay, so we're going to have current I2, that is a certain distance away from the first uh, wire. Okay, so that would be the distance I would substitute in here. All right, let's put it all together now and calculate the force. All right, so now we put everything together. So I have the direction of the magnetic field now produced by the current I1 going into the page on the right side, coming out of the page on the left side, right? And it does these, uh, it's circumferential around that wire. The field is, expression is given by this magnitude, okay? So it gets smaller the further I am away from the source. The source is I1. So we're now interested in finding the direction of our magnetic force. So for that, we apply the right-hand rule number one. So what do you do? You place your index in the direction of the current. My middle finger now should be into the page. And if you do that correctly, you should find that their magnetic force has to act in this direction. This is the force F2. Okay, let's go ahead now and find the magnitude. Um, this is a cross product, remember? And if I have any two vectors, if I want to find what the magnitude is, imagine you have a vector A, and I have a vector B over here. There is some angle here between both of those vectors. If I'm worried about how big the vector C is, the equation to find the magnitude, you simply multiply the magnitude of each one of those vectors, and it gets multiplied by sine of the angle theta between both of those vectors. So we're interested in the magnitude of the force F2. How big is that force? So I apply the, our equation here. So it's the magnitude of the first vector that's simply I2 multiplied by the length of this second current and multiplied by the magnitude of the field B1. That is our expression up above here, the permeability of free space, the current I1 divided by 2 pi R. And R in this case is the distance from center to center of these two wires. I'll just write it as D right here. And multiplied by sine of the angle. Okay, so what is the angle now between both of those vectors? One vector is pointing up, it's the direction of the current. The second vector is into the page. Actually, so this angle theta here is actually 90 degrees for our case. So sine of 90 is equal to one, so that gets simplified. All right, so our magnitude of the force, F2, is, I'm gonna just rearrange this. So I'll bring mu zero here, two pi, these are constant values. Um, you can see it depends on the length, right? How long is that current? Uh, multiplied by both currents, right? This, um, how much current is in the magnetic field and also the current I1, which is the source of the magnetic field. 
It also, it depends on the distance between those two wires, right? If the distance is far, I'd expect the force to be small. And again, I no longer need to worry about that sine of theta term because that's equal to one. So a lot of times for these problems, we're interested in the force per unit length. So what you could do is simply divide through each side by the length L2, and that'll give you an expression for the force per unit length Right, you can just eliminate this term, and then you're left with that. Okay, so let's go ahead now and just substitute our values just to get a numeric value for the force per unit length acting on this uh, current I2. All right, so substituting our numbers now, um, you just simply have to look some of these up right? if you don't know them. Uh, mu0 is 4 pi multiplied by 10 to the minus 7, so that makes it pretty small, divided by 2 pi. And now I substitute the values of the currents here, 0 0.5 for the current I2, 1.2 for the current I1, and they're separated by three meters. And remember, this is the force per unit length that I'm calculating here. So I put that in the calculator and I get four times 10 to the minus eight. This is in Newtons per meter, right? That's the force per unit length um, acting on the current I2. Right? So if you know the length, you can simply bring that to the other side and find the total force in newtons. All right, so let's have a look at this problem. So we just did this calculation. We found that there was a force, a magnetic force that was acting in this direction. That was the force of object one on object two. All right, but what if the problem was calculate the force now on object one? Well, how would you do it? Okay, so let's consider what we have. So. I'm going to use my equation to find the force on object one. This is going to be due to object two. However, the current that I'm considering here is I1. It's going to have a length L1. And it's placed now in a magnetic field that is produced by object two. What is the direction of the field produced by object two? Well, again, I use right hand rule number two and I should find, right, the field is circumferential. So it goes into the page on one side, comes out of the page on the other side. So in this position here, the field produced by current I2 should be out of the page. Everywhere where current I1 is located, the field produced by the current I2 is out of the page. The magnitude of the field produced by current I2 is mu0 I2 divided by 2 pi r. <laughs> Remember, these wires are a distance d apart. So let's put everything back into the equation. All right, let's first find the direction, actually. We can find the direction using right-hand rule number one. All right, we're going to use right-hand rule number one. So we take our index finger, you place it in the direction of this positive current. The field is now coming out of the page. Right? You can see by these uh, dots here. These symbolize a vector that's pointing out of the page. If you do this correctly, you should see that the magnetic force, my direction of my thumb, should point in this direction. So this is the direction of the force F1. So we know the direction of F1. If you're interested now in how big is that force, now we substitute in all our magnitudes. So we have I1, L1. Uh, the magnitude of B2 is mu0, I2 divided by 2 pi over D. Okay, again, this sine of the angle theta, but it's sine of 90 degrees in this case. So you see that if I'm looking at the force per unit length for this, uh, uh, for this wire, I'm going to get the exact same expression as what I previously had, mu naught over 2 pi. I have uh, both currents now, I1, I2 divided by d and sine of 90 is one. So we get to the exact same expression that we previously had. The other important thing is that, look it, if we have uh, currents in the same direction, right? So parallel currents, that means that we are going to have an attractive force between both of those wires. The forces are the same magnitude, they're in opposite direction, and they're on different objects. Okay, let's go look now at the anti-parallel case. All right, we now consider the opposite current case. Now it's gonna go a lot faster. So again, the field produced by the current I1 goes like this. That means everywhere on the right-hand side, we have a field that is going into the page. Okay, so the field at this position is going to have the same magnitude because the field is given by mu zero 
It's produced by the current I1, and we're measuring it always the same distance from center to center. All right, so now we apply right-hand rule number one because we want to find the direction of the magnetic force. You take your index finger, you point it down. Now remember now I have to rotate my hand a little bit because my middle finger has to point into the page. If you do that carefully and you apply right-hand rule correctly, you should find a magnetic force that is acting like this to the right. Make sure you'll actually get that, okay? If you consider the opposite case now, you have the current I2 flowing down. This current produces a magnetic field that goes around that wire, okay? Now you have to apply right-hand rule number two, right, to find this direction of the magnetic field produced by a current. If I do that, my thumb's in the direction of the current going down. Here I should get my fingers that are going into the page. So a vector that goes into the page is like this. And on this side, it's coming out of the page, right? So everywhere to the left of the current I2, the field should be going into the page. Okay, so again, this is the field produced by current two. <clears throat> How would I find now the direction of the magnetic force acting on the current I1? Again, we apply right-hand rule number one to find the direction of this magnetic force. So let's go ahead and apply it. We have a current going up. You place your index finger going up. You place your middle finger in the direction of this magnetic field. This is going into the page. And your thumb, if you did this carefully, your thumb should now be pointing to the left. This is the direction of the magnetic force produced by the current I2 on I1. So what do we have? We have opposite currents are going to repel each other. Okay, this is a very, very important topic in magnetism. Okay, um, currents that flow in opposite directions repel each other. Currents that flow along the same direction are going to attract each other. And that is a consequence of this magnetic force equation and the direction of the field produced by each one of those currents. All right, and if I'm interested now in the magnitude of these forces, I'm going to find the same magnitude, they're just in different directions, and I'm going to get to the exact same expression that I had for the parallel case. Okay, so I'll just write the general equation like this. Again, depends on both currents, depends on the distance between them. Okay, and this gives me the force per unit length acting on each one of those wires. All right, thanks for watching, folks. Hopefully you've learned something in this video.